Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's problem of the week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's problem of the week asks you to prove that e to the pi is greater than pi to the e without using your calculator or anything, because it'd be easy to just type in e to the pi and say, oh, yeah, it's greater than pi to the e. But there's actually a kind of clever way to do this that involves finding a function or creating a function with some of the properties you're looking for in order to be able to prove that e to the pi is greater than pi to the e. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So we take ln e to the pi is greater than ln pi to the e. And ln of, pi to the, uh, ln of e to the pi is just going to be pi. And that is going to be greater than. So by the properties of logarithms, anything to an exponent, the exponent is just going to come down in front. So we have pi is greater than e um, times ln of pi. And so now we can isolate the e. So we get the pi's on both sides. So we, we can go ahead and divide by um, e. Or I guess in, in this case, why don't we just divide by ln of pi. So we have pi over ln pi is less than e, um, or is greater than e, excuse me. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say, OK, so we need to be able to prove this. But so we're going to look for a more general function um, that we can use and then create some kind of restrictions on that function. So why don't we go ahead and let f of x be equal to uh, x over ln of x. So as we, as we can see here, instead of pi over ln of pi, we have x over ln of x. Uh, so what we're going to do now, so if we consider the graph of this function, it's going to look something like this, kind of going up here, this asymptote here, and then kind of dropping down there. So our graph is going to look kind of something like this. So we need to find the extreme value. So we're trying to find maybe what this value is going to be here, because it looks like we have no global minimum or global maximum, but we have a global minimum or a local minimum uh, right there. So we need to try to figure out what that value is. So the way that we're going to do that is we use a, the first derivative test. So we're going to take f prime of x, and we can use the quotient rule. So low uh, derivative of x is x uh, is 1 uh, minus high, so x uh, times the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x. And underneath, low squared will go, so ln squared of x. And x times 1 over x is just going to be 1, so we end up having here ln of x minus 1 over, oops, ln squared of x. So in order to find our uh, extreme values, or in this case extreme value, we're going to set this equal to 0. So when we set this equal to 0, um, we have 0 is going to be equal to uh, ln x minus 1 over ln squared of x. And so we can multiply both sides by ln squared of x. Uh, and that just gets to be 0. So we have here uh, 0 is equal to ln of x minus 1. So we solve for x here, and we get 1 is equal to ln x, or x is equal to e. Um, OK, so now we know that x, so x is equal to e is going to be where on the x-axis we have our local minimum here. So when x is equal to e, so this is 1, 2, so it's about 2.71. So about right here, so this is our x value, so we need to find the y value. So in order to find the y value, um, so actually, we can just find the y value by plugging in um, f of e. Uh, and we get here e. So um, at the point ee, e, so we're going to achieve our local minimum at ee. E, because if we plug in um, e over ln e, we just get e over 1, which is e. So f of e is going to be e. So our local minimum occurs at um, e, e. So that's going to be our local minimum here. Um, OK, and so now we see that when x, so when x here on this x-axis is greater than e, so when x is greater than e, so over here, f of x is also going to be greater than e. Because we have a local minimum here and around this neighborhood here, we know that uh, all of the values over here, when x is greater than this local minimum, the function is increasing, so f of x is going to be greater than e. And we know, we know that since pi, since pi is greater than e, 
we know that since uh, when x is greater than e, uh, f of x is greater than e, and since pi is greater than e, um, f of pi is greater than e. And f of pi, as you can see here, is pi over ln pi. So in other words, pi over ln pi is greater than e, which is exactly what we were trying to show. So if we wanted to get back to our original kind of inequality here, we could just multiply both sides by ln pi. Then we could uh, exponentiate both sides, so e to the pi, e to the you know, e ln pi, or e times, yeah. So you would just exponentiate both sides, take e to the of uh, both sides, and you would end up getting this final inequality here, which is e to the pi is greater than pi to the e. So we kind of used a little workaround here. Instead of just conveniently using our calculator and plugging things in, we created a function, where we found a function that we could analyze, find the local minimum of using some calculus. And then once we find the local minimum, we found for which values the function was increasing. And so the function is increasing on the interval x is greater than e. So that ends up proving that um, f of pi is greater than e, and so that completes our proof. So that's it for this week's problem of the week. Uh, for the full problem, um, for more problems of the week, excuse me, you can see, uh, click this link here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can click here and to visit us at centerofmath.org. Click this link here. Thank you for watching.